Section 8.5 is on the adding and subtracting rational expressions. In order to add or subtract rational expressions, they have to have a common denominator. Ideally, that common denominator is going to be the least common multiple of the denominators. To find the least common multiple, we're going to factor the expressions completely. The LCM is the product of the prime factors each raised to its greatest power in any of the expressions. Let's take a look at an example here. So here we need to find the LCM of x squared plus 3x minus 4, x squared plus 2x minus 8, and x squared minus 4x plus 4. So let's go ahead and factor each one of those. So x squared plus 3x minus 4 is equal to x plus 4 and x minus 1. <clears throat> x squared plus 2x minus 8 is equal to x plus 4 times x minus 2 and x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to x minus 2 squared. So let's take a look at how many different factors I have. I have x plus 4 as a factor and actually that's in two of these. I have x minus 1 as a factor and that's only in my first polynomial. <clears throat> then I have x minus 2 as a factor that appears in my second polynomial but it appears in my third twice. So I need my LCM is going to consist of each of those individual factors. So there'll be an x plus 4 and raised to the highest power that it appears anywhere. So there's only an x plus 4 raised to the 1. I need an x minus 1 because that's an, another additional factor and that's only appears once isn't raised to any power higher than 1. And then I need an x minus 2 and I have an x minus 2 here, but then I have an x minus 2, the whole quantity squared, so I need the highest power. So that would be the least common multiple of those three polynomials. Let's take a look at another example here where we're going to add. I need to find the sum of 4 over x squared plus 3 and x minus 2 over x squared plus 6x plus 9. So I'm going to go ahead and factor each of my denominators. This one is going to turn into x times x plus 3 and this denominator is going to turn into x plus 3 squared. So my common denominator, and so I need obviously need a common denominator, my common denominator is going to be the least common multiple of these. So remember I'm going to take each factor raised to the highest power that it appears. So I have an x and then I have an x plus 3 but in my second expression, it's, it's squared. So my common denominator, actually I should have written at least common denominator, is going to be an x and an x plus 3 and an x plus 3. Now in order to get a common denominator for both of these, my first fraction needs to be multiplied by an x plus 3 on the top and bottom. So that's going to give me 4 times x plus 3 over x, whoops, not x squared, just x times x plus 3 squared plus and now my second fraction needs to be multiplied by an x on top so x times x minus 2 over x times x plus 3 squared and here's where I see a lot of people make mistakes as they look at that and go immediately to the previous lesson and say oh I can cancel stuff I can cancel an x plus 3 in the first one and I can cancel an x in the second one yes you can but that's not going to get you anywhere because that's going to change your denominator and in fact it's going to get you back where you started where you don't want to be so what we need to do now is add these two in order to do that I'm going to um, distribute across the top so that gives me a 4x plus 12 plus x squared minus 2x all over my common denominator. <clears throat> now I want to combine like terms on top. So I'll have an x squared plus 2x plus 12 over x times x plus 3 squared. Next thing I want to do is take a look and see can I factor my numerator? No I cannot. I cannot come up with two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to 2. So I can't do any factoring and canceling there. So that is my sum. That's what it adds up to. Restrictions on the dom domain. Take a look at your denominator. x cannot equal 0 and x cannot equal negative 3. 
Let's take a look at another example here. This one says find the difference of x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x minus 8 and x over 4x minus 8. Again, what I want to do is factor each of my denominators. So this is going to turn into an x plus 4, x minus 2. And for my second one, all I can do is take out a 4, and that's going to turn into an x minus 2. Now let's identify what our common denominator is going to be. So I'm going to have an a 4, I like to put that out front, and then I need an x minus 2 and an x plus 4. Each factor the greatest number of times it appears in any one of the expressions. So let's go back up here. You know, here's something I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a plus and move my minus up here. That way I won't forget to include that when I distribute. So my first fraction already has the x plus 4 and the x minus 2, so it just needs a 4. So on top I'm going to have 4 times x plus 1 over 4 times x plus 4, x minus 2. <clears throat> Actually, I think I'm going to, let's do this all at once here. Let's go ahead and do the whole top. Yeah. do this all in once here. Okay, so that's my first one, and then I have the negative x from here, and my second fraction is going to need an x plus 4. Okay, I hope that wasn't too confusing. So basically, this is my common denominator. My first fraction needed to be multiplied by a 4 on top. My second fraction needed to be multiplied by an x plus 4 on top. So let's go ahead and clean up our numerator by distributing. So 4x plus 4 minus x squared minus 4x all over my denominator. And let's combine like terms. Oh, this is kind of nice. So my 4x's will cancel out. And I'm left with 4 minus x squared over my common denominator. And I'm seeing that that can actually factor. In fact, I'm going to do what I did in the uh, the previous one where I need to I can pull a negative out of there and make that an x squared minus 4, which is going to turn into a negative x plus 2, x minus 2. Let's go ahead and cross out what I uh, changed already. So now I do have an x minus 2 that can cancel with this x minus 2. So what I'm going to be left with is a negative x plus 2 over 4 times x plus 4. You could go ahead and distribute that negative 1 if you wanted, but I kind of like it like that. I'm going to leave it like that. And now let's take a look at excluded values. What can x not equal? Taking a look at our denominator, x cannot equal negative 4, and x cannot equal a positive 2. And even though I had just a 4 in the denominator, there's no variable there, so I don't have to worry about that. And the last thing we're going to take a look at here is how to simplify a complex fraction. A complex fraction has at least one fraction in its numerator or its denominator. To simplify, you can multiply the numerator and the denominator by the least common denominator of all of the rational expressions, or you can combine the fractions in the numerator and then in the denominator and divide. I think I'm going to use the first method. I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the common denominator of every rational expression in here. So my numerator is 3x minus 1 over y. My common denominator for the numerator would be y. My denominator is y squared over x plus x. My common denominator here would be an x. So the common denominator that I'm going to multiply by is x times y. <clears throat> so basically this gets multiplied by x, xy, and this gets multiplied by xy. And all we're doing here then is distributing, okay? So that's going to give me a 3x squared y minus, these y's will cancel, minus x over, now let's distribute here. The x's are going to cancel and that's going to leave me with a y cubed plus x squared y, okay? and uh, let's see, is there anything I can, I could, if I really wanted to, I could cancel an x out of the top. 
That'll leave me with 3xy minus 1. On the bottom, I could cancel or factor out a y. That would leave me with y squared plus x squared. Nothing cancels, so that would be my final answer there. And then, um, let's see, any restricted values on the domain? I would probably just say that x and y cannot equal 0. So in this section, we took a look at how to add and subtract rational expressions. Um, remember, it's just like adding and subtracting fractions. When you do that, you have to come up with a the least common denominator, which is going to be the least common multiple of all of the factors in the expression.